Hi guys, it's Marina. I am here to do a share with you. I made quite a few journals and I don't usually make journals like this, but um, I did this time. I just made a whole bunch at one time. It took me like four days. I would say, well, from start to finish it took four days. One of the days I didn't do anything because I didn't want, I was, I looked at it and I was like, no, not today. <laughs> because there was just so much everywhere. Um, I wanted to try a few different things, and um, which I did, and I, I'll explain to you guys. I um, I took like, let's, let's see, three or four pieces of 12 by 12 chipboard, and I cut it down and just did random measurements. Well, not so much random, but, you know, you already know it's a 12 by 12 so I kind of did my own little head calculations into how I wanted it and did that plus there was a few things I wanted to try that you know new things I wanted to do and um, test out I'm sorry I have I don't know why but okay I have hives I don't have hives a lot but I used to have I broke out really bad with hives when I was little because I uh, used beeswax because I was trying to get dreadlocks and I broke out super bad with hives and um, I had to go to the hospital like I was like a big swollen it was bad but anyway I, I had them off and on for a couple of years it depends on the hair product that I'm using it used to depend on the hair product that I was using or if I got super stressed out if I got super stressed out I would break out in a bout of hives it was really bad and I'd just be taking Benadryl like it's the thing to do but um so I, I haven't had it for about a year. It's been about a year since I've had my last issues with hives. And now, I don't know if it's because I switched my conditioner, or I'm not sure what it is really, but I've just been waking up with little random spots. Like, I'll have, I had a one hive on my arm the other day, and it was there for two days. And there was, that was it, it was just there. Now I look like somebody punched me in my lip, but is my upper lip. It's just, I got a hive there, <laughs> and it doesn't itch. It just feels really weird. I feel like I got stung by a bee or something. So, I took some Benadryl. I guess my point is I took some Benadryl. I'm a little tired, but, um, anyway, I want to share this with you guys, and I will do my best to, um, uh, tell you the little different things that I did. Because, I want to try, I like to try new things or different techniques and see what works and what doesn't, or what I like and what I don't, and um, I feel like this was a good way to do that. So since I've never made in bulk like this, um, it was, parts of it was really annoying, and other parts, you know, you enjoy, like you enjoy the after, afterwards, which is like, yes, I finished this, it's all done, it, it looks great, or you know, just little things that make you feel better about it, but um, I did have fun thinking of different things to do and different techniques to use because I didn't want to throw away, because I was going to start off with one journal, and then I didn't want to throw away the leftovers, which was, you know, the part of chipboard, and it was this little guy right here that was left over from one of these here, and um, I didn't want to throw it away, so I, I like measured it down into this little thing and then I was like I might as well make more and that's what happened so um let's see I guess I will start with a little one and I'll try to make this quick and if you want to go ahead and skip random parts or whatever makes you feel like comfortable um so all of this is chipboard medium weight chipboard that I used and I used um, these from Tim Holtz. Um, there's another one, too. There's a second design, but I used the I used one of these and another one. So um, I used different techniques with distressing. Um, I okay. So I glued this on. I glued all this on, and then I distressed it like really heavily with Vintage Photo and Walnut Stain. Then I painted over it with rock candy. I was going to do matte medium, but I wanted to see what would happen if I used the rock candy, and it looks really, really cool. Like, I don't, it looks like, um, like amber or honey, or like, you know, when you go outside, okay, when I was little, I remember this, what this, what this looks like, um, when I used to go outside in Arizona, 
and I would see, uh, we would have pine trees out there. I don't know how they existed, but those things are super durable, and uh, they can withstand high temperatures and very low temperatures. So we'd go out there, and I remember playing, and we'd be picking up pine cones, and, you know, we were going to play with them or whatever, and then on the trees, they would have stuff like the sap coming out, and it would be like this. It would look all cracked and really pretty, and I really like how this looks, because of course, you guys know when you get the stress ink wet, it uh, it comes, it reacts to water or any type of liquid. So this just looks really cool, and this is the got a crackle effect. So I distressed over it. Instead of using the walnut stain again, I used the black soot over this one the third time or second time. But I have two signatures. I used the pamphlet stitch on all of them. And then I just tied some seam binding here. Some oops. I used some butterbee scraps scraps on the sides for the corners. And um, this is okay. If you guys haven't tried walnut ink yet, you really need to try some walnut ink because it totally changes not only the look of your paper but the texture as well. Like this ends up with like this really really awesome leathery feel. It's really I don't know. It's almost like leather. Sounds, I was going to say it's like, I don't know. But, um, so I'll just go ahead and do a quick flip through with the inside. And it's all hand dyed paper. And on all of them, I put these little tiny pockets. <laughs> they all have little tuck spots. Let me move this down, maybe that'd be easier. Just lots of, oh, that one doesn't have anything in it. Lots of pages and places to tuck things away, and these little tiny little ephemeras that I cut out, little ephemera bits I cut out from um, Marion Smith's paper collection. But that's this little one, and it's just got a little magnet on the side to hold it closed. So. That one, and I'll show you this one. This one I did as a little mini version of um, my big one. You guys saw my big one, and I I did two layers of uh, of chipboard. Sorry, I did two layers of chipboard, and uh, on my my first one, the bigger one, and um, I realized I didn't really need two layers, but I really wanted to make sure it was thick, and I kind of went overboard, and that was what happened. But um, I got this clasp from Lori, and I got this from Lori as well. Thank you, Lori. And so here's um, for more cutouts, some more cutouts from um, Mary Smith's paper collection. I put some bags in here. These were gifted to me as well. These ones came from Irene. Stop that. You don't need to sharpen your claws, Jupiter. They're as sharp as they're going to get. Seriously, we don't clip her. We haven't clipped her claws since we got her in. Her, her claws are good to go. She really does not need to sharpen them. It's <laughs> funny because she can't really run without or move around certain places without getting stuck. <laughs> She'll just. It's cute. So that's this one, and I will show you one more, and then I'll come back with the second part of the video. That way I can show you the bigger ones, and this video won't be too long. So I use some more um, Butterbee Scraps metal embellishments. This one, um, the closure is um, an eyelet with some seam binding. 
this, or some seam binding and some sari silks. You guys have seen my sari silks. I used um, walnut ink on these because I had used, you know, I make my own inks, but the walnut ink was just sitting in the back of the cupboard, and I was thinking, why haven't I used that on this on the sari silk? So uh, it's moist. Like this, uh, this is the Java color. It's supposed to be like really dark chocolate brown, but it kind of turned out black, which is totally fine. So this is from Lori. Thank you, Lori. And these were gifted to me as well on a swap. It was a long time ago. Um, and then this uh, background is actually some tissue paper. And I think it's Seven Gypsies tissue paper. I think this is, yeah, this is the Seven Gypsies. And uh, I hadn't used it on the journal yet, so um, I went ahead and used that on this one. And then on the back, when I was doing the, okay, this, so I used the matte for this one, and I also used the matte, uh, Liquitex matte medium for this one and this one. So, over here, when I was painting it on at first, I had messed up, and so I put this over it and just, like, put it down, and I kind of wish I would have done this all over the whole journal, because it looks really neat. When I distressed it again, it did this. It got super dark, and I thought that was really awesome. I, I kind of wish it was all over the whole journal. I mean, there's spots, but yeah. So, I'll go ahead and go inside and show you the journal. If I can pull the right strings. There we go. And this is Marion Smith's little paper cutouts too, and I also I uh, made some tags and just did a lot of random stamping. And this is some tracing paper. And it says, the things that matter most must never be at the mercy of things that matter least. This stamp here, the ones that are like this, were gifted to me from um, Irene. Thank you, Irene. And if you're watching, hi, Anna. So, um, there's just lots of... Lots of space to write. I wanted there to be lots of space to write. And, um, oh, there's another one. I missed a tag. And that's this one. And the video went on a little longer than I had hoped, but, um, yeah, those are those three, the little one, the littler ones, and I will do a video. I'll come back with a video of the other three, these ones, which they're all pretty much the same. I just did a little bit. I did little things different to all of them. So, um, all right, I'll be back with the next video. See you guys.